everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap for the May 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Last month we were inspired by the iconic Love Wall in New York City. Photo credit for the inspiration photo goes to Renee Fisher and James Goldcrown is the artist who behind this graffiti Love Wall art style and I'll have a link to his website down in the video description. As soon as I saw this picture, I was immediately drawn to it and knew that I wanted to dye some yarn inspired by love. With everything going on in the world and missing friends and family so much, it just felt like the perfect inspiration. Not only that, but it was adding a little bit of fun and there was immediately some ideas of how to literally translate this into a colorway, or at least uh, subtly incorporate it into a colorway that maybe you won't see the finished product, but you might know that it's there. But I'll get into some in progress photos in a moment. One of my goals from this live stream was to work on some nearly empty stock solutions I have on hand. Uh, I have so many bottles that are near empty and I don't like to leave any dye behind. But I did also mix up some new colors very randomly, um, not measuring out of concentration, but really going based on feel. And so for this first colorway, I played around with a lot of these colors just to get a sense of how pigmented they were and to see how they might work together. And this is a colorway I'm so proud of because I was able to have restraint. I could have kept going to end up with something bolder and more saturated, but I love these random patches of color and how it came together so much. Next up, we went in for our love colorway. With 300 grams of Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn, and all the yarn we used in this live stream was Stroll, it is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I literally drew hearts in the pan, layering multiple different colors and adding more and more hearts. And each time we flipped it, we added more and more hearts. This layering of color is very similar to a favorite back and forth zigzag technique, but there was something a bit more freeform of doing these curves instead of lines. And I absolutely love the way these colors layered together. I mean, just look at how these different colors play together. There is definitely no remnant of the actual heart shapes because as you move the yarn, you lose the shape. But you know that it's there, especially if you make it yourself this way or if you uh, watched me dye it and then purchase it from my Etsy shop. You know that that love is here in this yarn. There is one correction I would like to add from the stream. And that is where I said that paint is opaque and you can layer it on top of one another, but you can't really do that with dyes. And I should have said that some paint is opaque. There's definitely more transparent paints that are additive and show through what you see beneath the surface. But when it comes to dyeing yarn, unfortunately, we don't have a white dye that we can use that we can layer on top. So if I were to try yeah, there's just no way that I could take a white pigment and add white hearts on top. But with some restraint, I was able to leave some white behind underneath. And so that was pretty fun. In contrast with the love hearts, I went back to that favorite layering technique of mine where I layered zigzag lines across the colorway. And I think that there are some differences, although subtle, from what we see here to when we compare this colorway to our love hearts. I think that the difference is that here, because of the way we do the lines, there's sometimes, for example, two uh, bright blue lines in a row, and they definitely layer on top of one another. But we almost have more of a rainbow effect of the way that the colors layered in our hearts colorway because there truly was more of a randomness to it. Since I was drawing hearts all over, I didn't have as much control over where they went. And when I'm zigzagging across, I have more control over that placement and it just does create a difference. They are very, very similar and I think would fade extraordinarily well together, but they are absolutely different colorways. 
And so if I'm going to call this colorway love, I'd probably call these ones graffiti. Whichever way you go about it with hearts or dashes, all of this is just stunning, stunning yarn. And would be hard to reproduce a colorway given that there's this random element to it, even if I were to use the exact same colors and the exact same technique. There could still be some of these differences to it. Finally, in an effort to leave no dye behind, I used some of the remaining dye in these little squeeze bottles and layered them together to create this beautiful colorway. And gosh, there was so much more leftover dye that in fact, I filmed a whole video uh, where I just dyed a bunch of colorways and then added a voiceover on it. A huge leave no dye behind multi video, mega video. Uh, I'm not sure if that video has been published yet, but if it has, I will leave a link in the top right hand corner of the screen. And now it is time for my favorite part of these live stream recaps, where I share some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same photo. This one that was extra fun because some of you shared your in progress dyeing pictures along the way. And I know at least a couple of you also went for the literal heart technique and I'm so excited. And I really hope that you love the results of your project as much as I do mine. Um, but I love doing these dialogues because it's so fun to see what differences people pull and what different techniques people pull, all inspired by the same photograph. So whether you are pulling inspiration from a photo or from an idea, people can come up with things that are very, very similar or quite different. Now this brings me to a very important point. I am a teacher. I share my dyeing process so that way we can all learn together. It is very collaborative and fun. And I share my recipes and invite you to try my techniques and to copy my colorways. But this isn't the case of all dyers. And so when you're going and looking for inspiration, I encourage you to look at movies, nature, photographs, but don't pull your inspiration from someone else's dyed yarn. Unless, of course, the dyer is inviting everyone to do their own version of a colorway, it really is not appropriate to try to copy or recreate someone's colorway directly. Now, people can come up with things very, very similar uh, without it being a copy. Um, for example, I'm sure that there are hundreds of unicorn farts, uh, pumpkin spice latte, and mistletoe colorways out there. But I think it's important when you're looking for inspiration for something to dye for yourself that with the exception of my content, you're more than welcome to copy what I'm doing. Um, but it's important to look outside of what other dyers are doing. And if you are in love with someone's colorway, then maybe you should buy it and support their business. But again, I absolutely invite all of you and encourage you to try to recreate the colorways I do. That's the whole point between, that's the whole point behind me doing these dialogues and me sharing my whole process throughout. But I would say that I'm probably the exception rather than the rule. So while it is welcome and acceptable to ask me questions about my process. Uh, it's not necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily do that with other dyers unless of course they are inviting you to ask them questions about their process. I hope that makes sense. That being said, I do have a Facebook group, Chemnitz Lab, that is full of dyers and other fiber artists. And in that group, questions are welcome and encouraged. And in fact, I recommend that if someone doesn't want to talk about how they dye a colorway, maybe the technique is proprietary, just don't share it in the group because since it's a learning group and a collaborative group, um, in order to share things in there, I want people to be willing to answer questions and to talk about their process. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful group. Uh, and I hope you go and check it out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you want to support the channel, the biggest thing you can do is subscribe. Press that bell, ring the bell, turn on notifications, leave comments below, giving a thumbs up. Engaging with videos and the channel like this is the biggest way you can support the content. But if you want some other ways to support, 
Uh, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy shop where I sell the yarn that is dyed in my videos, and you can find links to all of that in the video description. There's even some limited merch over on Zazzle, and I have some logo tote bags in my Etsy shop, and so all of that is worth checking out. But again, watching and engaging with these videos is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.